Hello, and welcome to today's webcast brought to you by Laser Focus World. Today's event, Spectroscopy and Hyperspectral Imaging, the Fast and Easy Way with the Fergie Integrated Spectrograph, will be presented by Mark Waterland, Associate Professor at the Institute of Fundamental Sciences, Massey University in New Zealand. Today's webcast is sponsored by Princeton Instruments. This presentation is both live and interactive, so you can ask questions at any time by clicking in the Ask a Question box in the presentation window and clicking the Submit button. And we do encourage questions. We will hold a Q&A session right after the presentation. If you're running pop-up blocking software, you will need to disable it to view this webcast. And in addition, it's recommended that you close down all other applications for better performance. For those in the audience who want a copy of today's slides, a PDF of today's presentation is available in the event resources section <coughs> below the Q&A box. For your convenience, this presentation will be available on demand within 24 hours of this live event. A reminder email message will be sent to all registrants with a link to the archive. It will also be accessible from our homepage at www.laserfocusworld.com. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenter, Mark Waterlund. Okay, uh, thank you, John. Um, I'd just like to start by uh, thanking the team at uh, Princeton and Laser Focus World for this opportunity to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing with the Fergie uh, in our laboratory. We've had our instruments since about May of last year, uh, and it really has uh, changed the way that we're doing um, spectroscopy in our lab. So, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for me to sort of tell you a little bit about what we do in our lab. So, um, our lab is uh, mostly focused on Raman spectroscopy, um, and uh, we do Raman microscopy, um, solution phase, those sorts of things. And um, we tend to um, build our own gear. So uh, we have a, a microscope in our laboratory that we've um, uh, converted uh, into a Raman microscope. Uh, we've used Thor Labs gear throughout, um, used that for a number of years, um, and m most recently used the cage components. They're a um, really uh, uh, easy way to set up your lab these days. Um, we've recently got into fiber optics, um, just to make coupling between various instruments a bit easier. Um, we've used Princeton gear throughout for almost uh, 20 years now, um, so uh, we've continued uh, that with the, with the, with the Fergie. Um, our sources are just small diode lasers, um, range of wavelengths, uh, range of powers, and uh, the sort of typical student that, that I have in my group um, have a number of analytical students, physical chemistry students, and what they tend to do is want to come into the laboratory with their samples and get their measurements done pretty quickly. Now I'm noticing more and more that they, they want to spend less and less time um, setting up the gear, um, which is a bit of a shame for me because I'm the kind of guy who just loves spending time in the laboratory um, setting up gear. Um, but uh, with the Fergie, it's, it really keeps the students happy because they can uh, just get into the laboratory, set up the experiments, get their data and get out again. So um, it's really changed the way we do things in our lab. So just to give you some idea of how versatile um, the system is for us, um, so Massey University is an agricultural college. Uh, we have a veterinary school, uh, a lot of biology, um, and so we do a lot of um, agricultural, biological, zoological, um, veterinary um, samples. Um, we have interests, some of my students have interests in uh, various aqueous uh, analytical projects. Uh, and my own, my own interests are down here, uh, bottom right-hand corner, uh, in graphene uh, nanoribbons. So quite a wide range of materials, um, and it's important for us to have a really flexible um, system in the, lab, in the lab. And of course, um, you know, we have students come in um, uh, in the middle middle row here with the, um, the kiwi eggshells, and so the, the, these students, they're not spectroscopy experts. They come across, they bring their samples, they want to have a quick look at, at a sample. Um, it's really important for them to be able to um, have a system that's really easy to use. And again, um, Fergie really helps us out. So uh, we do a lot of Raman spectroscopy, SIRS, for instance. Um, here's a project we've been doing recently, looking at some rodenticides. Uh, in this sort of project, um, we need to uh, you know, do both the aqueous phase colloidal system and we do um, a dried uh, colloidal aggregate. So we need to be able to switch very quickly uh, between um, aqueous phase, say, in a cuvette, 
and then a dried sample on the microscope. Um, and so I'll come back to that point um, a little bit later on, how easy it is to switch between experiments um, these days. Um, this is another example of the sort of work we do. Um, uh, again, Raman microscopy, um, and we need to uh, have an easy way of setting up the microscope. Um, okay. So um, about 18 months ago, I um, had the opportunity to replace one of the spectrographs in, in the lab and um, uh, had, had a long association with Princeton. And so um, at that time, the FERC had just been released. Um, and so we looked at it uh, and uh, we essentially decided that um, FERC was definitely the right choice for us. Um, so it has fantastic performance. Um, I'll show you a slide in a minute um, that sort of illustrates the, the level of performance that you get out of the Fergie. Um, the cost was a, was, a, was, a, was a factor for sure. Um, you know, there's, there's the equivalent ISO, well not the equivalent isoplane, but there's the Princeton isoplane system, and we were, we were t it was a toss up for us between the Fergie and the isoplane, um, and so we, we in, in, in the end went with Fergie. One of the main things that sold, us, sold it to us was the compatibility with the Thor Labs gear. So we'd, we'd, we've spent many, many years using Thor Labs gear, um, and to have a spectrograph that we can just literally plug in um, to the Thor Labs gear. That, for me personally, as the guy who builds most of the gear, that that was the that was the number one selling point. And then once it arrived, um, we could not believe how easy it was to use. Um, it was just amazing. So. Yeah, so I'll just go, go through now the rest of the talk and um, show you uh, a little bit about the performance. I'll show you how it is it is to set up some experiments using the Fergie. Um, I'll show you some of the, the data that we can acquire with it um, to give you some idea of um, what we're doing uh, with it in our laboratory. So <clears throat> to give us some idea of, um, of the performance, uh, we use a polymethyl methacrylate um, disc as our calibration reference. And so um, in the bottom um, spectrum here, I'm showing uh, a spectrum of this uh, PMMA disc taken with our um, 785 nanometer system. So this is the Princeton LS785 system. And then up the top, I show you the same um, disc with, taken with the Fergie. And uh, what I want you to sort of notice carefully here are the relative band intensities. So in the middle of the um, spectrum, the band ratios for both the Fergie and the, and the 785 system, they look pretty much the same. And if you start going out towards the edges um, of, of the spectra, then what you notice is that the band ratios actually are actually quite different. And um, again, this, the, um, as you probably know from the isoplane, um, the, uh, both the Fergie and the isoplane um, have those wonderful corrections that allow the um, really high quality flat field um, uh, and uh, astigmatisms to be removed. And so you get a very, very reliable band intensities right across the whole spectrum. Um, and that's really important for us when we do our um, graphene nanoribbon work. So, um, oh, and there's the, that's, the, that's the full window that we get um, for our PMMA reference um, with the Fergie, so you're getting a nice wide window as well, um, which is quite, quite good. Okay, so um, this next slide shows you um, Raman spectrum of some graphene nanoribbons that we make in our laboratory. You can see up the top there, there's some TEM images of the ribbons themselves. And uh, we've used um, Raman microscopy to examine the uh, nature of the edges of these of these nano ribbons, so zigzag or um, uh, armchair edges. And uh, you can do this using um, polarized Raman um, microscopy. And what's really important um, when we do the analysis is, you, for those of you who are familiar with graphene spectroscopy, you probably know that um, the ratios of these various bands in the graphene spectrum tell you a lot about the, um, the structure of the sample. And so um, uh, to get the edge structure um, from Raman, you need to do uh, several different band ratios. So you'll do, you'll do the D to G, you'll do the G and the G prime. And um, clearly what's really important is that you've got very reliable band intensities right across the window. And for us, um, uh, the high performance of the Fergie gives us real confidence that we're getting really high quality um, band ratios um, for our graphene. There's another story that I should tell associated with this particular sample. So this is in fact, um, this 
was more or less the first spectrum um, that we obtained with the Fergie. It was um, acquired by a undergraduate student, um, so doing an undergraduate research project. And um, we had this data about uh, not even maybe two days after the Fergie arrived in our laboratory. So that gives you some idea of how easy it is to get it out of the box, get it on the table, and um, start taking some data. So um, yeah, so that's the um, first example um, uh, that I was going to show you. Um, OK, so I'll move on. Right, so uh, coming back to this, um, uh, these SIRS experiments that we do. So like I said before, um, we do the measurements uh, of the SIRS colloids in solution, and then we take the very same colloids and dry them into an aggregate and um, take the data. So these are the data that we've acquired with the Fergie um, using this approach. Um, but what's really critical for us is that uh, we want to uh, acquire the colloidal phase data and then very quickly dry the aggregate and then acquire the, um, the dry data. So for us this means we have to, uh, we're going to pot it into the cuvette first of all, get the solution phase data and then um, set it up on the microscope um, to get the dried data. So um, what the Fergie allows us to do is very, very quickly switch between um, the two systems. So that's going to be the next little bit uh, that I'll tell you all about. <coughs> Um, all right, so uh, on this slide, so here's, um, so what I'm going to go through now is show you how we set up um, uh, the uh, cuvette experiment um, using the Fergie. And I don't know if you may be aware that the, um, the Fergie system is based on these very, very um, uh, useful cube, um, uh, this cube system. Um, and you can get a number of different cubes. Um, so one of the ones that we purchased was the uh, cuvette cube. And uh, so these photographs show you um, some of the um, useful features of the cubes. So on the right-hand side, um, this is uh, one of the faces of the cubes. You can't quite see it. The photograph's not entirely clear. But there are little mounting pins, the blue arrows indicate, um, here. And they allow you to join the cubes together really, really quickly. Um, so there's no um, real fiddling about with um, alignment. And uh, then looking on the other faces, um, the cubes also have um, uh, uh, threads uh, that are compatible with the, um, the Thorlabs uh, 30 mil cage system. So this allows you to then to customize um, your cubes and you can um, just go crazy with the Thorlabs gear um, at that point. So um, what, I, what I'll show you next is um, how we take the cubic cube and set up our own um, uh, uh, Raman experiment using the cubic cube. Um, Okay, and so oh yeah, so that and that that uh, shot there just shows you how you can sort of modify the cubes with various cages and things like that. If, um, as we go, all right. So um, fairly straightforward Raman experiment here. Um, so we're using um, two of the Fergie cubes. Um, the first one is the cubic cube that I just showed you, and then uh, attached to the spectrometer is the focusing cube. And so the optical layout is pretty much what you would have seen um, before in any sort of standard 90 degree um, uh, Raman experiment. So we can add um, a focusing lens. Um, so we add that using the Thor components um, to the uh, cubic cube. And then we just bring our external laser source in um, in the usual way. Um, again, the, the Thor Labs components make it really easy to set this up. Um, so you can add these um, alignment targets. So we have two alignment targets, A1 and A2 and that solves the whole um, alignment problem for you um, very, very quickly. So to give you some idea of the, um, the bits that you will need, um, here's the, the uh, set of components that we use um, for our uh, uh, cuvette experiment. And so we start off with the, um, the cuvette cube. We modify the side of the cube um, with some uh, uh, cage rods, so the ER rods are the 30 mil rods that you get from Thor. Um, so if you try to join two cubes um, using the, the rods, you can't use a single rod, you have to use um, pairs of rods. So we use some short rods and then a thick cage plate. So this cage plate allows us to butt two um, rods together and join them using the cage plate. So you'll see how that works in a minute. I've got a little video um, to show you how it all works. 
Um, of course, we need a, um, an edge filter or a notch filter. So once again, Thor Labs make a, um, a convenient um, filter holder. And so uh, more rods, these rods are going to hold the, um, the focusing lens. We build in some adjustability um, by putting an XY um, translation mount, cage, um, cage mount, and then of course the focus, focusing lens itself. And then just to help with the alignment, uh, we chuck in a few extra rods. And then um, uh, you can get these cage alignment targets um, from Thor that you can just drop into the middle of the cage and um, go from there. So at this point, um, I'm just going to show you a little video um, about, uh, which illustrates how we go through the setup process. Um, just before I play, play the video, it might be worth commenting that um, the video is taken, um, this is the first shot, and it's a single shot. So there's been no fancy editing or anything like that. Um, this, is, this is setting up the system um, in real time. So keep that in mind as, we, uh, as I play you the video now. It's going to run for maybe a couple of minutes, so hopefully this works. Okay, so um, yeah, that shows you how, how easy it is to set up the, um, the cuvette. Um, so uh, I've got another video to show you um, shortly, um, which then completes the, the setup process. Um, so what I'm going to show you next is just the, the alignment um, procedure um, that we use uh, for um, getting the... Uh, getting the laser basically into the cuvette. Now, um, as you watch the video, just keep in mind that I've got two mirrors um, on the table. Um, one mirror you can see in the shot, and the other mirror is actually out of shot, just to the left. Um, and so when I'm doing one of the adjustments, um, it's, not, it's not sort of magic. Um, it's just that the mirror is out of shot. So um, I'll play you that, that video now, um, and this um, basically completes the whole, um, the whole setup.
Okay, so that's it. Um, so the total, um, actually, yeah, I've got on this slide here, total setup time uh, less than 10 minutes. That whole procedure took me five minutes. Um, I've had a little bit of practice, uh, but you know we're talking about minutes in terms of total setup time, and that's switching right from um, if you think back to the, the start of the video, I had the, the fiber coupled in there. Um, so that's sort of the um, the setup time. Um, in terms of finding the signal, um, the the spectrum that I'm showing you here, I've just used toluene as a as a as a standard. Um, we put about 20 or 25 milliwatts into the sample. Um, one second exposure. Um, in terms of finding the signal, um, I think on that particular day, uh, my first my first shot had about 12,000 counts um, following that procedure, and then a little bit of tweaking, I managed to drag it up to about 18,000 counts. Um, so there's virtually no time at all in terms of finding the signal, um, and so from that, that that gives the students a lot of confidence. So they're not going to spend hours trying to find the signal if they know they follow this procedure and bang, they're going to have a signal and off they go. So um, the, the students really like using the, um, the system from that point of view. So um, that's the cuvette. Um, I'll uh, show you how we, um, a couple other other um, bits of apparatus um, into the Fergie um, on, in these next few slides. So um, we have been using um, fibre optics um, fairly extensively uh, in our lab. Um, and again, four labs um, have a massive range of, uh, of, of optics to, to suit whatever purpose. Um, so you can get um, you can match the apertures of the optics and the, um, the diameter to suit. Um, they sell these uh, um, uh, very very nice to use um, fiber port um, adapters, uh, which make aligning the fiber um, reasonably easy. They're a little bit fiddly to use, but once you get the, um, get the hang of them. Um, they work really well. So um, we use our fibres to um, couple between the, um, the, the spectrographs um, and the microscope. So I'll show you how we do that uh, on these slides here. Okay, so this is our, um, our microscope set up. Um, so here's the microscope um, in the left panel. Um, you can see the side exit port, uh, which is where the, um, the Raman scattered light um, comes out of. And then we've got two mirrors. Um, two steering mirrors um, to bring the uh, the beam um, down into the fibre, and then in our cage system um, in the foreground here, we've got a focusing lens, and then again uh, X and Y um, adjusters to align the um, the fibre um, onto the beam. And the right hand side just shows uh, um, that set up um, from a slightly uh, different angle. So that's the collection side. And then um, uh, obviously the fibre goes off um, off to the, to the fibre port, um, and that um, hooks into the cage system that's um, sitting on the focusing cube uh, on the Fergie at the other end. All right, so that's the that's the collection side. Uh, here's the input side. So here's our microscope. Um, it's just an uh, uh, Olympus IX70, so it's an inverted fluorescence um, microscope. Um, that we've just very simply converted into into a Raman system. So we've put uh, so the key component is our um, edge filter um, that uh, sits under the now the, the shot's a bit dark here, but you can see the turret um, sitting up um, above um, the uh, the edge filter here. Uh, you can just make out the um, the objectives uh, in the background there. So the beam comes in from the, um, the rear port of the microscope. We use a folding mirror to bring the beam down onto the edge filter. Um, we've used a custom filter from um, Iridian um, for this purpose, um, which just makes the angles um, a bit easier to work with. And then uh, we have the, the, the problem of then aligning the beam onto the um, optical axis um, of the microscope. So that's the next slide. Okay. So to do that, we once again um, use these cage components from four. So we've built a little alignment cage, um, which is shown on the right-hand um, images here. So uh, our alignment cage, again, just has a couple of targets um, that we've seen the beam through. And on the turret itself, um, you've got standard um, RMS threads, um, but four labs sell uh, a massive range of thread adapters. So you can get an RMS um, thread to S
for it. Um, and that then aligns the, um, finds the optical axis um, very, very quickly. So these um, three slides show the sequence. So we um, thread the uh, a, a little alignment cage um, onto the turret. Of course, we've done a little bit of 3D printing as well. So the, um, this white mount here is a 3D printed um, mount. Uh, so alignment cage goes on to the turret, bring the beam in, find the first um, target, do some adjusting, find the second target, and um, and we're done. So um, that's essentially align the system, and then it's just a little a matter of tweaking the um, the collection optics that I showed you before, um, and we're in business. Uh, it can be a little bit of a challenge to um, first of all set up the collection optics, but uh, once again we use um, the convenience of these um, Thor Labs cages. And so we've got at the top here we've got a um, uh, we've got a 532 nanometer laser which is coupled into a fiber port. So the beam is now coming down, back down the optical axis. So we're doing a back alignment and um, we just align the beam back down through our cage and that gets spat out the side port and down into our um, collection optics. Um, word of warning, um, make sure you disconnect the fiber into the spectrometer before you turn the laser on. Otherwise you will kill your pixels um, with your alignment laser. Okay, um, and so we can do lots of other experiments. Um, so uh, we use um, volume Bragg filters to do low frequency Raman. And again, the cage system uh, plus the Fergie um, makes this uh, process setting up really, really simple. Oh, no, 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 that's not true. This is actually quite a bit of work to get the, um, the notch filters lined up. Um, and you can use you know, various mounts and things um, to do that setup. Beam comes in from the far side. Um, the volume Bragg filter uses a 20 degree incident angle, so we've got this angle coming in here, bounces back towards the sample, and then down onto the, um, uh, back down into the spectrograph. Um, now because you have a um, CCD camera inside your spectrometer, you can um, use that to do your alignment. So when we're looking for, um, uh, when we first put the, um, the uh, fibre port onto the Fergie, um, it can be sometimes a little bit hard to actually find the spot, so um, just use the use the CCD as a as a camera. So go to go to um, full sensor, take the slit out, wavelength to zero, and now you've got a, a lovely image um, of the end of your um, fiber, which you can then subsequently align um, using the light field um, software. So that works really well. Um, and now, so then the last few minutes that I've got here available today, um, of course you can use it as a, as a camera and so um, at the top of the talk I talked about um, hyperspectral imaging um, and so this is the experiment that we're currently setting up at the moment. Um, so uh, we had a quick um, chat with, with Pong Zhu uh, at Princeton and uh, he sent us a, um, a CCTV lens that um, essentially uh, has the correct numerical aperture for the spectrometer um, and once again um, Thor Labs adapters mean you just have to essentially um, screw the two things together and straight into the spectrometer. You take the focusing cube off, there it is there, and uh, and then just thread everything together. And um, I'll show you some images that we took. So this is the first image that I took um, with the CCTV um, camera. If you're wondering what the image looks like, there's a screenshot, and it's a screenshot of my phone. Um, so uh, you can see that the, the resolution of the images is pretty good. Um, this is an alignment grid, um, just to give you some idea um, of the quality of the images that you're getting um, right across the sensor note. Uh, and if you want to, you can then um, go away and um, play with those images to your heart content. Um, so the experiment we're doing um, at, at the moment um, is uh, uh, we've got some biology um, colleagues who uh, genetically modify um, fungi um, for various reasons, and they do an assay for reactive oxygen species, which is based on a chemiluminescence um, measurement. So what they need to be able to do is bring us a petri dish um, with fungal colonies um, into the lab, and we need a, a convenient way of um, capturing the chemiluminescence intensity um, of these fungal colonies. So um, 
the setup I showed you before, uh, we had the alignment grid and the, and the, the various other objects oriented vertically. Um, clearly, we want the Petri dish to be lying flat on the table. So um, this is the setup that we came up with. Um, it's a little bit harder to see in this shot. Um, so I've sort of highlighted the beam path with these blue arrows. Um, but all we essentially do is, is use a, um, a folding mirror uh, just to bounce the uh, image um, off the table and back um, back into the into the camera. And if you see here, this is actually my business card, and I'm a bit disappointed because the resolution of the photograph isn't that great. Um, but again, it shows you sort of the quality of the images um, that that we got um, uh, out of this particular system. And um, again, you know, it's such an easy experiment to set up. Um, we, this was our very first attempt um, at imaging. Um, not just with Fergie, but with any system whatsoever. Um, and it took me, it took us 15 minutes to get the um, the image that you're seeing on the screen um, in the right hand uh, photograph there. So again, really easy to set up. So then um, here is the, the here is the image of the um, the fungal colonies. This is a petri dish. Um, the spacing between each of these colonies is about two centimeters. So um, we're able to do somewhat wide field um, imaging, and then uh, you can do all the false color um, um, processing uh, inside light field um, uh, as you wish. So uh, that actually almost brings me to a close. Um, I'm just a few minutes ahead of schedule, so that's not a bad thing. Um, all that remains me uh, remains for me to do is um, thank um, some people. So um, thanks, of course, to um, Massey University prov for providing the money to buy the gear. Um, uh, sincere thanks to Neil and Carlos Gar and the rest of the guys um, at Newspeak Australia. Um, they popped me on to Fergie, uh, and I'm so pleased they did. Um, thanks very much to Pong and uh, Debbie and everybody at Princeton, um, and again, also the technical support um, that we've received um, has been outstanding. So thanks very much to the guys um, at Princeton. Um, and you know, we'd, I don't often get a chance to talk about the, the technical aspects of the laboratory, so I'm very pleased to be able to say thanks to the to the um, the wonderful technical support that we have um, available here at Massey University, um, both in mechanical and electronics. Um, again, um, we've had excellent support from um, uh, people at Thor and, and various other places. And I have to thank uh, my 16-year-old teenage daughter um, for the uh, outstanding technical support for um, editing the uh, movies that I showed you uh, earlier on. So that um, uh, brings my um, presentation to a close, and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, we're in now in the Q&A portion of the webcast. So once again, to ask a question, click on the Ask a Question icon in the presentation window. So our first question, can I use a picosecond super continuum laser source with narrowband filters instead of continuous wave lasers? Uh, John, I, I think I can yeah. chime in uh, on this question. Uh, by the way, I'm, uh, my name is Peng, uh, Peng Zhu. I'm a product manager from uh, Princeton Instrument. Uh, so to this question, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit unclear what uh, the intention of using, using the supercontinuous laser for is for, for absorption or for uh, Raman. But uh, just to try to answer it, there's uh, absolutely, you know, literatures out there that using uh, this type of laser source to do coherent anti-stocks uh, Raman measurement. Uh, so, and uh, there's no doubt if you want to use it for absorption, there's no, absolutely no problem uh, uh, to do that because it's a super continuous, right? Uh, uh, another question is, uh, uh, you know, in order to, if you intended to use a Fermi spectrometer to do this type of research, uh, the, the wavelength range uh, is going to be uh, what uh, you have to pay attention to. We have a CCD camera in the Fergie, so, you know, uh, it's uh, from 200 to 1100 nanometer. Uh, that's the only limiting factor there, um, but in theory, uh, it, it should be able to do the, this type of research and measurement. Okay. Um, 
I'll, I'll, so I will just ask the questions, and Bong, you can jump in if um, they are product-related, which a number of them are. Um, what other cube accessories are provided by Princeton Instruments? Uh, you know, uh, we uh, so first let me thank Mark to be one of the early adopters for the Fergie product. Uh, the reason uh, that uh, you know he showed us so many different uh, uh, different uh, research, uh, different measurement of all kinds of different material in his lab, and uh, since then uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, cube uh, uh, now becomes available to make the experiment setup a lot easier. Including the the 532 nanometer Raman that the Mark was built basically by himself. Uh, there's also a, a, a cubes to couple uh, Fergie to a microscope to do microscope Raman. Uh, I, I think these are all inspired by many of our customers, and uh, the goal is really to make uh, make uh, the system uh, easy to be used by, by uh, not necessarily a professional spectroscopist, but more of uh, you know, pretty much a grad student, undergrad student, and uh, all kinds of uh, uh, interdisciplinary research uh, area. So, okay. Uh, uh, so there's uh, uh, just a quite quick, quick uh, summary. Uh, 532 nanometer Raman, uh, absorption setup, uh, sample holders, and uh, you know, microscope coupler accessories. Uh, you can also I really encourage you to go to our website to take a Fergie website to take a even closer look at and uh, what what we are offering right now. Nice, nice. So okay, so next question: uh, Can Fergie be used for Raman on graphene? Yes. Uh, absolutely. So we've um, we've done uh, a whole range of different experiments um, on our graphene nano ribbons. Um, uh, when we're uh, setting up our graphene experiments on the ribbons, we use um, standard single layer um, graphene, uh, and we get really nice data out of the um, single layer graphene. Um, yeah. The um, what what's we, you've got a very wide um, spectral window, so you can you can uh, gather. Um, all the way across from the, the, the D, the G, all the way across to G prime um, in a single window. Um, and like I showed you before, um, the uh, intensity ratios are, are outstanding. So we have really, really high co um, confidence um, in the quality of data that we're getting for our graphene work. Mm -hmm. What else can you do with Fergie? Can you do fluorescence? Can you do absorption, reflection? So one of the one of the experiments that we're going to do um, shortly. Um, so I showed you at the end there the wide field um, uh, imaging experiment. We're going to try wide field fluorescence. So all, we, all, all what we're intending to do is uh, find a reasonably intense um, uh, laser source and use a beam expander uh, and then illuminate the whole petri dish that we're that we're talking about before. So we can do wide field fluorescence um, um, with the with the uh, with the Fergie. And um, if we can do like if we can do Raman microscopy, we can do fluorescence microscopy. Um, one thing that we would like to try um, uh, in the near future um, are the uh, the um, transmission Raman experiments as well. Um, so we think Fergie would be ideal for those sorts of experiments. Okay. Other than the Olympus, have you coupled the Fergie to any other microscopes for Raman analysis applications? Uh, no, we haven't, um, and that's purely because we haven't managed to get our hands on another microscope yet. Um, yeah, but I, I couldn't see any uh, any problems at all, so long as the microscope has uh, a, a side port for um, uh, sending the signal out of the microscope, then um, it, 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 you should be able to follow exactly what we've done. And I think what Pong mentioned before with the um, the cubes, which sound really good, we might purchase one ourselves. Um, yeah, that ability to use a cube to couple it to the um, to the Fergie should make that setup process pretty straightforward. So uh, just to uh, follow up on, on what Mark said, I think uh, we we've done a lot of coupling to all kinds of different microscopes here. 
uh, with, uh, within the, the organization as well as the helping the customer. So including Nikon, uh, uh, Ytac, uh, pretty much all the major microscope brand you can find uh, that out there. For different applications, of course, some, some of them are uh, microscope Raman, some of them are just uh, you know, dark field fluorescence type of, uh, type of uh, material measurement. Uh, so yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question: Is there a LabVIEW driver for Fergie, since we'd like to synchronize multiple instruments in our experiment? Yes. So that's probably a, a, a question for me. We do provide a LabVIEW driver as well as MATLAB and uh, Python, uh, and, and uh, so which uh, allow the most. Uh, Especially for academic researchers, uh, that's the, the, the language they prefer to use, and uh, you know they, they can couple the, the, the system easily with whatever the, the, the other instrument they wanted to uh, make it even automated or, or, or to fit their own uh, own needs uh, for certain research. Okay, how do you take? The spectrum and the image at the same time. Well, Mark, do you so, want to <laughs> hyper spectrum? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I can I can jump in for that one. Yeah, so um, so the so we're using the CCD uh, essentially as a camera. So we're using both the vertical and the horizontal um, uh, axes of the camera to acquire the image. So to get the wavelength information effectively on a third axis, um, we use a, a wavelength selective filter in front of the um, in front of the camera. So um, this is where these um, volume um, Bragg gratings uh, for us doing Raman um, are really, really, uh, really, really important because we get um, very narrow um, uh, bandwidth um, from a volume Bragg filter. Um, and so we can get down to 10 wave number um, uh, bandwidth. So we can take the spectrum essentially in 10 wave number chunks um, simply by changing the say that the incident angle of that filter that's sitting in front of the um, in front of the spectrum. And so uh, the question about the uh, interfacing um, with with uh, external bits of gear is really important because what you'd like to then be able to do is uh, take Take a spectrum at a certain wavelength and then uh, rotate the, the the filter and so on. You'd like to automate that process and and then essentially build up the um, the spectrum layer, uh, build up the hyperspectral image layer by layer along the wavelength axis. So that's what we're um, planning on doing next. Okay, this next question is clearly for Pong. <laughs> How can I get more information on Fergie? <laughs> Oh yeah, we have a <laughs> good question. Uh, we have a web dedicated website, uh, www.fergiespecspec.com. Uh, there's we, we we keep updating the the website with more and more app notes, information, technology notes, and videos. So so please check check it out. And uh, uh, hopefully you know if you don't you cannot find an answer you want. Uh, feel free to contact us. We are, we are, we are uh, you know, uh, open to answer any of your questions. Uh, I just want to add a, one thing to what Mark just said: is uh, uh, imaging. Uh, if you are familiar with grading, uh, you, you the, the grading can be scanned. Actually, one thing uh, that, uh, uh, that I want to point out is once you put a grading at a so-called zero order, uh, the grading basically behaves as a mirror. That's how you uh, measure uh, imaging. Uh, image of uh, a subject from uh, uh, from a sample field, and then if you want to take spectrum, you move is you, you move the the grading to the to whatever wavelength that you're you're interested, in. and that gives you uh, actually a hyper spectra uh, uh, slice of the of the sample field. Okay, we have time for say three more questions, um, and I wanted. Uh, note to the audience, uh, if your question arrives too late or if it has not been answered for whatever reason, um, all these questions go to our presenter who is then able to answer them later via email. 
So next question, are you removing the grading for wide field imaging? No, 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 the weird. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, that's we're we're doing uh, what what Pong mentioned just then is that we we set the um, uh, set the grading to zero wavelength and then like I say, it essentially acts as a mirror. Okay, so uh, next question: How does Fergie compare to Princeton Instruments' other spectrographs like the Isoplane? Uh, yeah, I know that Mark, uh, if he had had mentioned uh, in the earlier presentation, is uh, uh, he he wanted to start with isoplane, and uh, that's what his interest in is. Uh, and later on, uh, you know, settled for Fergie. Uh, they both of both of the instrument isoplane and all our other spectrometer product are all really high performance, uh, very uh, great systems. Uh, the Fergie is a little bit special because it's a kind of integrated system, and uh, it's uh, maintained the performance while uh, are are being you know packed in a relatively smaller footprint and make it a, uh, a relatively easier to use. So it really depends on the application that uh, and the type of research uh, for each individual customer is what you want to do with uh, you know with a spectrometer or spectrograph. Um, it's really hard to see one is better than other, or one is really shining, you know, really, uh, you know, top notch, or the other one is not. All of them are has its, its pro and con, and uh, uh, it, so it's really depends. Yeah, I thought maybe just add to that. Yeah, that's essentially um, the conclusion that we came to as well. Um, and at the end of the day, it was the integration of the Fergie that um, essentially made our decision. Okay, our final question for the day, uh, probably for you, Pong, because it's product related. Can you tell me a bit more about your aberration for your optical design? Oh, yeah. Well, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, that topic itself can be another uh, webinar, <laughs> John. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 benefit that's that's really a, a core technology uh, from PI from Princeton Instrument. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's what that translates into is uh, we can have a extremely high resolution. Uh, high uh, spatial spectral resolution depend on what it, what what uh, user wanted it to do across the entire uh, detector focal plane. So it doesn't matter you're in at the center or at edge of the detector. You get uniform the best diffraction limited resolution. I think that's you know it's kind of summarized in one sentence. Well, how that translate into the uh, you know spectroscopic data? you get a much better signal noise ratio, uniform resolution across the entire spectrum. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people appreciate that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, well, again, like I said, we actually we're thinking about maybe we should have a, a webinar so we can actually explain what aberration really is, all why it matters, why, you know, again, you can uh, go to the Fergie website, go to Princeton Instrument website, you will find more about uh, uh, what that really is. Okay, well that concludes our Q&A, but I did want to ask you, Mark, uh, do you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? Um, not particularly, no. Um, <clears throat> no, we have, like for us, the, the Fugi really has uh, changed the way that we're doing spectroscopy in our laboratory. Um, you know, the students spend uh, much more time thinking about their chemistry problems or their biology problems um, and less time worrying about setting up the Raman system um, and it's just it's just great for them right um, for me as a Raman guy um, <laughs> you know, I'd like to spend time in the lab and fiddle about with optics but the students you know it's, it's especially it's it's the students who uh, have the wider range of applications that, that it's really benefiting mm-hmm well, on behalf of Laser Focus World and Pinwheel Corporation, I'd like to thank today's speaker, 
Mark Waterland of Mass University, New Zealand, for today's presentation, Spectroscopy and Hyperspectral Imaging, the Fast and Easy Way with the Fergie Integrated Spectrograph. And as I noted before, for those in the audience who want a copy of the slides today, a PDF of the presentation is available in the event resources section below the Q&A box. This presentation will be archived within 24 hours and can be reached from our homepage at www.laserfocusworld.com. A reminder email message will be sent to all registrants complete with a direct link to the archive. We thank you for joining us today and look forward to serving you with future webcasts.